you find that the, the major complaint Ken Salvo had, the major trouble he had with Shell is that he said they were exploiting Ogoni in the polluted Ogoni environment, but the Ogoni people were not getting anything from the resources that was being taken out of Ogoni. And then the Ogoni people put together their demands, which is um, which is contained in the document we call the Ogoni Bill of Rights. Okay. Now, when you look at the Ogoni Bill of Rights, you find out that virtually all the issues that are raised in the Ogoni Bill of Rights are issues of underdevelopment. We don't have water, we don't have hospitals, we don't have schools, we don't have roads, we don't have um, the infrastructure is bad. All of that are issues of underdevelopment. And so Ken's dream was that he was going to address these issues of underdevelopment. Now, 25 years later, we are glad that, first of all, this dream is still alive. Okay. The dream to get Ogoni developed is still alive. And um, But one of the things, the changes we want at this time, the changes that most of is driving is that we need to move away from um, the rituals of um, gathering on January 4th, Ogoni Day, and we gather again on November 10th to remember the Matthias. We need to also think about what is good for the Ogoni people. And in thinking about what is good for the Ogoni people, we came up with this proposal for the Ogoni Development Plan. And um, this is not just a document, this is not just an academic exercise. We're talking about, we're talking about um, a comprehensive plan to address underdevelopment in Ogoni. Okay. And um, here we came to, I, I actually worked with a, a team and then we came up with a plan and presented that to the executive committee of Mossop. We got the approval at the executive committee level. We presented it to the uh, central committee, which is also called this, the steering committee of Mossop. Mm. And we got the approval of the central committee for the creation of an Ogoni Development Authority. The Ogoni Development Authority is an initiative of Mossop. We are not asking government to create that, no. We are creating the Ogoni Development Authority to drive development in Ogoni. Is that constitutional? I, I thought it yes. uh, so it, uh, either the state or the federal governments that uh, were the custodians of creating uh, agencies or authorities no. to uh, so, uh, 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 find solutions to certain uh, uh, deficiencies in society. No. Um, the idea is, um, is, is, I mean, having an Ogoni Development Authority is not, it does not have to come from the government. Okay. Um, the most of is, is 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 fine and most of has the capacity legally to create the Ogoni Development Authority. As a social cultural group? Yes, most of can create the Ogoni Development Authority. As a matter okay. of fact, we, we do have a legal team and we discuss all of this with the legal team. Okay. We ask the question, can most of create this agency to drive development? And they said yes. Every of our lawyers said yes. Okay. I think it's just a need. Um, and if you look at the, the document itself, you see that there is a relationship between the Ogoni Development Authority and the River State Government, the relationship with the Ogoni Development Authority and the Nigerian government. Okay. It's they're, they're, I mean, the relationship is ancillary. It's not, um, it's, we're not challenging the authority of government, no. What we are talking about is creating an agency that can drive development in Ogoni. And that process will involve um, having an Ogoni Trust Fund where resources that belong to Ogoni people can be kept. And, and then we are going to do the comprehensive Ogoni development plan. We are not talking about, um, when we talk about Ogoni development plan, we are talking about do road here, do water here, build these schools. No. We are talking about mapping the entire territory called Ogoni okay. and doing a design of that territory, designing development. A blueprint. And, yes. And so we are going to have where you should have the water treatment plants, you're going to have where you should have the uh, power generating uh, and plants. You're going to have where you should have a school, where you should have everything, where you should, I mean, the, the housing plan, the inf infrastructure. And so you can, you, can, you, can, you, you can contract, for instance, you can contract the man who built Dubai and say, we want you to design Ogoni for us. And he, go, he goes ahead and finishes the design. And then we now go into implementation. Now, the implementation of that design is one of the issues that uh, has been, um, I mean, that, that has interested a lot of people. But fundamentally, most of the, 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 the struggle of most of had been that Ogoni people should benefit from their resources. Okay. And if you have followed all of this struggle over time, there is a tradition in Ogoni which we call Mideko. 
in what it simply means is that when you when, when you take resources from a man for four days the fifth day you give that you, you give whatever you generate to the owner of the land and so me they call when interpreted simply means Oguni gets 20 percent of her resources assigned to Oguni development the idea behind Oguni development authority is that 20 percent will go to Oguni people and it's going to be in a centralized trust from where you can implement the development plan so basically it is not something that maybe a company or an individual is going to control that we are going to that, that there will be a company that was going to take resources from Oguni and then all of us we have to go there to say we want water we want hospital we want yeah. school or we want this or that no most of through the central committee with the creation of the Ogoni Development Authority can drive development all over Ogoni without going to anybody to seek help. Okay, now in a worst case scenario, what if this uh, Ogoni Development Authority is not recognized by government? It, How it, would that affect it, 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 the functioning of this authority? It, it must be recognized. By must be? It must be recognized by government because it's an initiative of the people to address a problem that has been there for over 30 years. Government does not have an alternative. What government simply wants to know or should be interested in is what have you decided and what is the proposal that is there. So we are going to put it out there. As a matter of fact, we don't need the approval of government to get a good development authority functioning. What we need is an understanding with whoever is interested in taking the green resources and then we can move on from there okay so far we um, while well, we had um, as of last week we made it known to the audience or every person out there that the Ogoni people you've written to the presidency because you need uh, the media call thing that you talked yeah. about the 20 percent yeah. and uh, I asked if the president has reached out to you so far and as of last week we had no situation how far so has that gone we actually wrote to the president um, um, on the issue of the exoneration of the nine okay, that, we yes. are, that we are hung in 1995. And um, we haven't gotten a feedback yet, but we are not relenting. We're okay. following up on that. We are very optimistic. It may not come before the 25th anniversary on Tuesday, yeah. but we are certain that it will come because we are not relenting. It's, it's, it's one of the things that we want to see done because we understand, we know very well that exonerating Ken Salimewa and the other eight it's going to build a lot of goodwill for the government. It's going to also build a lot of goodwill for the development proposal that we have put out. And it's going to help with the emotions. Yes, it, 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 yes it's going to heal a lot of wounds. Um, Closure. Ken Salomewa and the others yeah. have already been killed. So there is not much we can do. What we know that we can actually clear their names because they were innocent. So fundamentally, what we are talking about there is that these guys were innocent. You need to clear their names. Mm -hmm. It is it is one of the fundamental demands of most of Anogoni people at the moment um, that they should be exonerated, and I think it is right that they should be exonerated. It is absolutely right. Now, when when you said uh, that uh, the uh, the document, uh, the proposals that you set out on how the establishment of this. Uh, uh, Ogoni Development Authority that it was taken to various committees within MOSOP. Was there a larger uh, uh, gathering of other stakeholders within Ogoni land to actually get the support of not just the uh, members or the executives of various committees within MOSOP, but to uh, the, the, the support masses. of the masses within in every nook and cranny of Ogoni land. Because it's one thing for MOSOP to say, okay, we are proposing this, but then not everyone in Ogoni land is on board or in support of this move. Has that been considered? Has that been put into consideration? Or was that done in, in, in the formulation uh, uh, process? Yes. The, mov the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people represents every um, section of Ogoni. Okay. We do have the National Youth Council of Ogoni people representing the youths. We have the Federation of Ogoni Women's Association representing the women. Okay. We have the Council of Ogoni um, Traditional Rulers representing the, the, the chiefs. Okay. We do have the Council of Ogoni Professionals representing the, the professionals. We have the National Union of Ogoni Students. We have the Ogoni Students Union, which is for those in, in, in the secondary schools. The National Union of Ogoni Students is for those in, in tertiary institutions. Mm. Um, we, we, we have the Ogoni Council of Churches. We have Ogoni Teachers Union. We do have those affiliates. So every so, demographic yes. is so covered. We do have, when, when, when the movement for the Southern Ogoni people takes decision, you've actually taken decision 
with everybody, every section of Ogoni participating. As a matter of fact, you find that until Mosop, until Mosop speaks on an issue, it appears Ogoni hasn't spoken. That is because every section of Ogoni is represented in Mosop. Okay. Yes. And so, and that is that is what you find in what we call the steering committee or the central committee of Mosop. All of these people will have to be there. And then you put forward whatever proposals. When they discuss it and approve it, it's done. Besides that, those these 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 decisions are communicated to every I mean every community in Ogoni. Okay. Through the the, the kingdom coordinators of most of who are also represented on the central committee or the steering committee. The kingdom committee um, kingdom coordinators take it to all the chapters that are there, are, there, are, there, are, there is most of in every every community in Ogoni. We call them chapters. Okay. All right. Uh, for, for those of you listening, it's 99.5 Bush FM, your business radio, right here in Port Harcourt. And today on the Niger Delta people, we are looking at a very, very interesting uh, area that's got to do with the people of Ogoni land and it has got to do with development. And not to forget, on the 10th, it's going to be the 25th year after Ken Sarua died. And we want to know how far are the Ogoni people doing to achieve his desire because he his dreams his dreams, the dreams and not the just the dream of him but for the dream of everyone but he was a spokesman for every one of them out yeah. there yeah. and so far we have our guest here figalo unsuke who happens to be the muscle president here in nigeria i believe that's the only one we have in nigeria yes. and mm-hmm. uh, so far he's given us highlights and the moves and the process that they're going through and it all looks good but we want to know if the um like you said earlier that before on the 10th if they don't exonerate the nine orders ken and the eight orders that uh what would be the fate of the ogoni people is this whole movement definitely it's a development movement it's going to kick off no doubt about that but how would you people still manage yourself with this thing? it's a struggle because it's it's an emo- people might just see it like it's there but it's something that's got to do with the emotion and the emotion of man has a lot to do with man himself so how would you people still go about this push yes it's, it's a struggle and um it's a struggle against injustice okay um if ken is not cleared by the 10th of november 2020 it doesn't stop the agitation we'll continue with the agitation because we know that he was innocent and we know that it is right for his name to be cleared and that it is possible for his name to be cleared and so whether or not it comes by the tent or after or, 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 okay. it's something we must continue to push forward to right. something we must continue to to, to 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 let the government understand we must continue to put pressure on the government to do that because it is right as a matter of fact um, the democracy we enjoy today is coming to us by, I mean, as a result of the sacrifices of people like Ken Sarawiwa. After Ken was killed um, and the other eight were killed, um, Nigeria was suspended from the Commonwealth. And one of the conditions Nigeria was given is that Nigeria should democratize. And Nigeria actually, you can see that they fast forwarded the process of democratization after the hanging of Ken Sarawiwa and the other eight. So, we, I mean, I think that it is. Is, is actually awful. I mean, it's strange that Nigeria does not consider it necessary to exonerate cancer over, given that those, I mean, the government, we're, the, the democratic government we are enjoying today is actually as a result of, it's coming as a result of the sacrifices of people like Ken. Wow. Yes. So it's something we must continue to push forward. And I know it's, it will come, certainly it will come. It's not something, we are not relenting on that issue. It will certainly come. And I, I, I am confident that it's going to come sooner than people think. It's going to come very soon. Hopefully we want uh, it's, it's that to It's going to come happen. very soon. Okay, time checking our studio is 6.52 p.m. And today is the 8th day yeah, of October 2020. Okay, it's okay. almost time for us to round up this segment. So okay, I, I, This is something I keep asking yeah. e- every guest that comes in and is talking about this. The representatives, because, of course, it's a large region. Ogoni uh, land is a large region, and you have representatives yeah. at the state level and, of course, at the federal level. Yeah. Are they in any way part of the this movement as regards to the creation of uh, uh, the Ogoni uh, uh, P- Development Authority, yes. is, are they involved in any way? We have a duty to, to, to consult with everyone that we need to consult with. But fundamentally, yes. Mosop has the mandate of the Ogoni people 
to drive development. MOSOP has the mandate of the Ogoni people, which is clearly stated in the Ogoni Bill of Rights, to ensure that the injustices that have been done to the Ogoni people are addressed. Um, we've had representatives, I mean, from the beginning of Ogoni till this date. And um, things are still the way MOSOP okay. drew, MOSOP actually brought about the change. The MOSOP will continue to push for this change until Ogoni sees light. What we want is that every child that is born in Ogoni must have a future and that the resources of the Ogoni people must benefit the Ogoni people. Every child that is born in Ogoni should have a future because we have enormous resources. You cannot be taking away so much from Ogoni. If they drill oil today in Ogoni, I tell you, not, I mean, excluding, Ogoni is actually a gas field with some oil. People think that Ogoni is just, an, I mean, there is much oil in Ogoni. What we have in Ogoni is just described as some oil. What Ogoni truly has is gas. And if they start exploiting that today, I tell you something close to 20 billion naira will be going out of Ogoni every day. You can't be doing that. And the people are not, I mean, the people are suffering. We don't have jobs. Young people don't have a future. We want that narrative to change. Yeah. That is the idea behind the Ogoni Development Authority. It has to change. All right, so uh, this is uh, this is something that we'll need to revisit. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, time, time is not on our side, but we have to continue with this discussion, and we are hoping that uh, by next week, Sunday, y y we could have you here in the studio. Hopefully, you would be do, here I, before I, time. I, I do hope. <laughs> <laughs> and to tell us exactly what the next step is, of course, by the by next week, uh, Sunday, uh, the uh, uh, 25th uh, anniversary of his, uh, his passing would have come and gone. Yes. I would love to have you here. Uh, tell us uh, exactly what activities were set out, what decisions, uh, what added decisions have been made, yes. and, of course, the way forward. Can I just say one more thing? Oh, oh, go ahead. Go, go yes, ahead. I, I want to get people to understand that um, the struggle of Mosop had been a peaceful one and that we also need to be peaceful. Mm. I do understand the frustration of joblessness. I understand the frustration of um, living in an environment where you wake up in the morning, you cannot even think of a company where you can submit your CV, not to talk about getting a job. It's very frustrating, but I encourage Ogoni people to hope and believe that where we are going at this time, what we are driving at is something that's going to change Ogoni. I thank everyone who has been involved. I thank even the, my predecessors in Mosop because um, we may never have had this struggle sustained if not for the effort they put in, for the things they did. After the death of Ken, it was not easy to get Mosop still alive, I mean, to, to keep Mosop alive. And so I thank everyone who has been involved in this process. Mm. And I do hope that by the end of the day, they will understand that what we want is that the dreams of Ken, that Ogoni will be a place where, I mean, Ogoni will be home for all. Ogoni will be a place that will be competitive. Ogoni will be a place where People will want to come because of the food. I, I mean, the the, the 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 competitive environment, the the, the opportunities that, uh, that 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 the society offers. Mm. That's the whole idea behind the Ogun Development Authority, and I do hope that it actually actualizes, it actually brings to reality the dreams of people like Ken Sarawiwa who gave their life for this whole thing. Thank you very much. And the nine orders. And, and, and the, the eight, eight orders. Eight, eight <laughs> orders. They are all the eight orders. Yes, and the, their blood went Also, for it. not to forget, everybody in the Ogoni land wants the same thing Ken wants. Yeah. And so everybody is on the same lane. Yeah. And oh. we are hoping that it would set off a ripple effect for other parts of the Niger obviously. Delta that are yes. also. Obviously. That obviously. Are also development in Ogoni is going to drive development in the entire in the entire Niger Delta region and it's going to change the entire country. That's 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 right. Obviously. We're Thank you so, so much. That. Okay, this is a message of hope, I must say that, and I want to say thank you to you once again, sir. We really appreciate you for coming, and hopefully next week we want to have you here. <laughs> oh. Hopefully. I do hope. I do hope that works. <laughs> this smile doesn't tell it's going to work, yeah. but all the same, we really appreciate thank you, you coming much. today, and thank then you. next week we're still going to reflect on how far after the 10th, after the 25th anniversary, we're going to be looking one more time how the whole situation how the event took place and it will be on this frequency 99.5 which fm right here in port harcourt river state nigeria my name is Romero Bini and i remain eric baroni thank it's you it's now time for me to say goodbye on this segment and uh, for every one of you out there don't forget every saturday from 1 to 2 p.m i'll be here and on sunday from on Saturdays from 9 to 2 p.m. I'll be here. Then on Sundays from 1 to 7 p.m. I'll be here with Eric Burney. His weekend has started today. Tomorrow he'll be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye. Have a wonderful time. Well, signing out with this song, and it was uh, 
it's been dedicated to Ken Saro by the Ultra Brad. They are some Swedish group somewhere in the world and they got inspired by Ken Saro and the song was made and enjoy this one. Ultra Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. 